So this is EC201, lecture 31. Yesterday we finished looking at the, the common collector amplifier and in the limit that the GM and the beta tend to infinity we saw that the incremental gain tends to 1, the incremental input impedance tends to infinity and the incremental output impedance tends to 0. And as I said, uh, you can combine the signal picture with any one of the four ways in which to stabilize the bias and uh, you are basically all set. The next thing is uh, to re realize an incremental voltage controlled current source. And the basic idea is the following, we want an I out which is V in by R and what do we do? If we had a variable current source, what we would like to do is to pass the I out through the resistance R and if the output current is correct then the voltage developed across this R must be equal to V in. This is precisely the same thing that we did with the MOS case. In other words, you want this current source to be a function of this potential minus that potential. So, it should be of the form some gm times if I call this vx vn minus vx. So, then you can recognize the transistor as being this and like we saw the last time around the incremental equivalent circuit is R, this is V in and the desired output current is this. The only difference between this incremental circuit and what we saw for the common collector amplifier yesterday is what? The difference is where we take the output. So, we can borrow heavily of what we did yesterday. What was V, what is Vx by Vn? Look back and tell me when you have finite gm and finite beta, what is Vx in terms of Vn? gm into 1 plus 1 by beta divided by gm into 1 by 1 plus beta plus 1 over R. So, 1 over R must replace 1 over RL which we had yesterday. If that is Vx, can you tell me what uh, I out will be? In a MOS transistor, I would agree with you that uh, Vx by R would be the uh, incremental drain curve. It is beta by beta plus 1 times Vx by times Vx by R and Vx by In is nothing but Gm to 1 by 1 plus Gm times 1 plus 1 by beta plus 1 over R this times 1 over R. So, this is nothing but Vx by Vn this factor comes about because the incremental emitter current is not the same as the incremental collector current. The incremental collector current is almost the same as the incremental emitter current. The ratio is almost close to 1 because beta is large. This is nothing but incremental collector current divided by incremental 
emitter current and this and this character here what does that represent if I multiply this guy in the green oval with uh, Vn what does that represent it is the incremental emitter current as gm tends to infinity and beta tend to infinity i out by vn becomes equal to 1 over r what happens to the input impedance what is the expression for input impedance it is beta plus 1 we did this yesterday it's beta plus 1 times r plus beta by gm and sure enough as beta and gm tend to infinity we see that the input impedance goes to infinite infinity the next thing we need to do is find what is a control source we found the control parameter we found the input impedance the next thing is to find the output impedance and uh, what will the output impedance be okay would you expect the output impedance to be high or low why it's a voltage control you are trying to realize a voltage control current source since the output source is a current source you would expect or you would at least hope that the output impedance is high what is it replace the transistor with its incremental equivalent circuit you are interested in finding the output impedance so the input so all the independent sources can be de-energized so the input source so it goes to ground you replace the transistor by the incremental equivalent circuit which is this is uh, beta by gm and this is gm into minus vx and we are interested in finding the impedance looking in here this is z out what is it it's infinity you're looking at a current source it must be infinite so z out is infinity if i assume this particular model for the transistor in reality the transistor does have an output impedance the output impedance is between ro is between which two nodes which is the base which is the emitter which is the collector what is this the base okay what about this guy emitter okay what is this the collector so the ro is between collector and the emitter so we need to find z out what well, would it make sense in this context to change the direction of the current source and call this gm dx so here would it make sense to push in a current find the voltage or push in a voltage find the current push in a current why because you see two branches in in series all right so it makes sense to push in a current and measure the voltage develop across the port what i would do would be to put in a test source ix and measure the test voltage developed across the voltage developed across this source vx vx by x should give me the impedance hmm? i can redraw that resistor like this what is the total current flowing through this entire branch it's ix so vx must be must be equal to ix times r parallel 
beta by gm. What is the voltage drop across R naught? The voltage drop across R naught is basically I x plus gm V x times R naught is the voltage drop across R naught plus V x. Oh, sorry about this. I shouldn't have. Let me call this uh, I one. Let me call this V one. V x must be equal to I one times R parallel beta by G n. For those of you just joining the show, I had mistakenly named this node and this node by the same name, which is a stupid thing to do. V x is basically I one times R parallel beta by G n. So this must be I one plus gm vx times r naught plus vx must be equal to v1 please note that the voltage v1 is the voltage drop across r naught plus the voltage drop across these two resistors which is denoted by vx which happens to be i1 times r parallel beta by gm i1 times r naught plus vx times gm r naught plus 1 Times v x must be equal to v one, and what is v x? It's nothing but i one times r parallel beta by g m must be equal to, which implies that the output impedance z out is Gm R naught plus one times R parallel beta by Gm plus R naught. Beta is very large. What do you see? Z out is approximately. If beta tends to infinity, what is this? Gm R naught plus one times R plus R O. So what do you expect for Gm R naught? Will it be a small number or a large number? Be a very large number, which is approximately Gm R naught times R. And if you want this, if you want a good voltage-controlled current source, then you will choose Gm R to be much greater than one. It's simply Gm R naught R, since Gm R should be chosen to be much greater than. So, in other words, if GMR is chosen to be much much greater than one, you can neglect all these extra characters and basically focus on this guy here. And what is the moral of the story? What is this guy telling you? So, if you didn't have the resistor, if you just had the common emitter amplifier, the output impedance would be R naught. Now, because you have the resistor in the emitter, the output impedance is increasing by a factor GM times R. And what is GMR? Yesterday we looked at it. What what does that physically represent? GM times R represents how strong the negative feedback loop is. I would like to just point out that the raw output impedance was R naught. Okay, if we just took the common emitter amplifier. The output impedance is getting multiplied by this factor, Gm times R. Okay. The next controlled source is going to be the incremental current control current source. So again, based on feedback principles, what would we do? We had we go over the same reasoning all over again. If we had a variable current source. What we would do is compare the input current. So we want I out to be equal to I in. So if this was the input current source, we know that uh, coarsest of terms, we put a ammeter in the output. Look at the reading. If it is not the same as I in, then you tweak the current in the appropriate direction. 
the same thing can be accomplished by monitoring the potential of this node okay make these two current sources fight each other monitor the potential of this node i mean this, so you compare the potential of this node with ground if uh, this potential is increasing you know that i out is is larger so i must actually reduce i out so this current source must be must respond to the difference between this potential and ground and what must be the sign of the uh, current source it must be minus gm gm times 0 which is the potential of this guy minus vx and as usual you identify this with the transistor and lo and behold which is the base now so this must be the base this must be the this must be the emitter so this must be the collector so the incremental diagram the the base must be grounded the input current source incrementally must look like this and the output current source is basically incremental current flows out that way so the next thing is to find the uh, ratio of the incremental output current to the incremental input current when the real model for the transistor is plugged in so let's do that what would you call this amplifier topology the common base amplifier and in the mosfet case this was the the common gate amplifier this is exactly analogous to that there is nothing new it behave and under ideal circumstances it must behave like an ideal current control current source so the input impedance must be zero the output impedance must be infinity and the current gain must be one if the transistor was ideal okay let's see what happens in practice when the transistor is not ideal without having to guess we just replace the transistor by its incremental equivalent circuit which is the following this is i out this is uh, beta by gm this is gm times minus vx and this must be in so what is the incremental i out by in there are many ways of doing it i'll write kirchhoff's current law at that node so the current flowing in this direction is uh, vx times gm by beta as the current flowing through this path the current flowing through this path in this direction is plus gm times vx and this must be equal to minus i n which means that vx equals minus i n divided by gm times 1 plus 1 by beta this is a bit a useful expression because from this we can find the input impedance later hmm? and what is i out it's minus gm vx which should give us i in times gm the gm goes away which is which implies i out by i in is basically beta by beta plus 1 i mean you didn't have to go through this whole reasoning for this we uh, already know that the incremental emitter current the ratio of the incremental collector current to the incremental emitter current is beta by beta plus 1 which is also called 
the alpha of the transistor. The alpha of the transistor is very close to being 1 for a good transistor where beta is reasonably large. Okay. What is the input impedance? Zn is nothing but is now minus Vx by In because I am sucking current out of the node which basically means we already found Vx by In. So, it will just simply be 1 over Gm times 1 plus 1 over beta. That is simply this expression over here. And we see that as beta tends to infinity, Gm tends to infinity, we see that Zn becomes 0. What about Z out? Z out in this particular example is infinity. In reality, as I said, the transistor will not have infinite output impedance. So, then you replace the transistor with the incremental equivalent circuit which is beta by g m this is g m times minus v x this is R O, this is I out. To find the output impedance here, do we need to do the math all over again or do we have, have we already done this? In the previous expression you just make R goes to infinity. Z out is simply given by this where R goes to infinity. So, this will simply be equal to in practice the driving current source itself will not have an infinite output impedance. So, if this output impedance was R, which is the, the output impedance of the input source, the current source driving the amplifier, then you will have this parallel R. And you can see that uh, what is happening if beta is large. Z out is approximately Gm R O times R in. I mean, this is what a current control current source is supposed to do. It's, take, it's taking a lousy current source and making it look like a. Why is this a lousy current source? The output impedance is only R in. But when you look at it from at the collector, it looks like the output impedance of the poor current source R in has been enhanced by a factor same times R. You understand? The last thing is the current controlled And what is the uh, basic idea? The basic idea is to try and generate an output voltage which is the input current multiplied by R. What did we do? We would say if we had a way of varying this voltage, then I know my output voltage is correct if V out minus I in R equal to 0. So, one way of making V out correct is to compare this potential with ground and if this potential is too high, what should I do? If this potential is too high, it means V out minus I in R is too high. It means that which means that V out is too high. So, I must bring V out down and how will I bring V out down? I must suck current out of the node. So, 
if I had a current source which was controlled by the difference between these two potentials, then this is of the form Gm times Vx minus 0. Is the direction correct or is the direction wrong? If Vx is positive, current must be pulled out of V out. So, the direction is correct and real pro circuit designers you have identified this with the incremental model for the transistor. This is I in R in the limit that gm tends to infinity what do you think uh, the output impedance will be? The output impedance should be 0. What about the input impedance? This is an ideal current control voltage source. What is the input impedance of an ideal current control voltage source? 0. What is the, what about the output impedance? 0. Okay. So, let us see if that happens. Uh, and what would be V out incrementally? It is simply I n times R. This is the base mind you. This is, this is a resistor value beta by gm. And this is a control source with a transconductance of Gm. This is Vx. This is the base. This is the collector. And this is the emitter which is ground. Is that clear? Now, all the thing to do is to simply run straightforward circuit analysis. Uh, Let us try and find say Vx first. And what is Vx? What is the current through R? Has to be Gm Vx. What is Vx? Okay, what is the what is Z in? The smart thing to do is to uh, uh, notice that if this voltage is Vx and a current of Gm times Vx is getting sucked out of this node, equivalently this whole branch looks like as far as the base node is concerned, looks like an impedance value 1 over Gm. So, Zn is simply 1 over Gm in parallel with beta by Gm, which is basically 1 over Gm times 1 plus 1 by beta. Does it make sense? Vx is nothing but minus I n times Z in. What is V out in, term, in terms of Vx? This current is Gm Vx. I am telling you, you know this potential. So, the question is how will you find the potential at the collector? incrementally. So, V out is nothing but V x minus the current flowing in R times the resistance itself. The drop across this resistor is nothing but G m V x times R. Alright. This potential is V x. The potential of the base is V x. So, the potential of the collector must be V x minus G m V x times R. Is that clear? Which means it is Vx times 1 minus Gm R. And what is Vx? It is nothing but minus I in times Z in and Z in happens to be 1 over Gm times 1 plus 1 over beta, which means this is nothing but V out by I in is nothing but Gm R minus 1 divided by Gm times 1 plus 1 by beta. And clearly, as Gm tends to 
infinity beta tends to infinity v out by i n is simply equal to r as we had expected. Does it make sense? Otherwise, it's slightly off from R by, you know, you can go and do the math. You understand? And as the GM tends to infinity, the input impedance, the input impedance also tends to zero, which is what it should be for an ideal current control voltage source. The last thing is to find the output impedance. To find the output impedance, what will you do? You have to de-energize all the independent sources and apply a test voltage or current source at the output port and measure the current flowing. So, what would you suggest? Should I apply a voltage and measure the current or should I apply a current and measure the voltage? Things are in shunt, so it makes sense to apply a test voltage at the output and measure the current flowing out through that test voltage source. So, if I applied uh, V, let me call this uh, V1, we are interested in finding out what this I1 is. So, any suggestions quickly? First thing is to find Vx and Vx is simply V1 times beta by Gm divided by beta by Gm plus R. So, voltage divider and once Vx is known, I1 is simply Gm Vx plus Vx Gm by beta. Correct? The current flowing here splits its two parts, one like this and one like this, which means I1 is Vx times Gm times 1 plus 1 by beta and Vx itself is V1 times beta by Gm divided by beta by gm plus r this times gm times 1 plus 1 by beta is the one which means that the output impedance z out is the reciprocal of this which happens to be gm times 1 plus 1 by beta times 1 plus gmr by the important thing to note is that as beta tends to infinity z out tends to 1 over gm and why does that make sense physically look at this diagram and tell me So, if beta tends to infinity, what happens is that this resistor will tend to infinity. So, if I yank this up, there is no place for current to flow, so this will also move up by the same amount. If this moves up by the same amount, the current being drawn is Gm times Vx and this current is 0, so it is basically 1 over Gm. You understand? In fact, uh, if you go through the MOSFET example, you will find that that will also tend to 1 over GM as it must because if beta tends to infinity, the incremental equivalent circuit for the MOSFET and the bipolar transistor are the same thing. Hmm? And in addition to beta tending to infinity, if GM tends to infinity, that out will tend to 0 as we want. Does that make sense? Okay. So, so far, the equivalent circuit for the transistor we have used is the following. 
this is GMVB. This is the small signal equivalent for the BJT in the active region. And from your knowledge of two port networks, which say from networks and systems in the last semester, a two port can either be represented like this or like this. This is called the T equivalent, this is called the Pi equivalent. So this, as I said, luckily we don't have the uh, reverse transmission term here. If that was there, this resembles, the, you know, a Pi type model. So this is called the hybrid Pi model for the transistor. And this is sometimes denoted, especially in early bipolar literature or even now in, if you open textbooks, this is often called R pi. Okay? So there is nothing to be perturbed about R pi, it is simply beta by Gn. You understand? And the simplified hybrid pi model, which does not uh, take into account RO. is the following, you simply get rid of GM times VB. The reason why, it, I mean, do you know why it is called the hybrid pi model? It is pi alright, but what about hybrid? So originally the bipolar trans was always analyzed using the H parameters and we have always done everything with Y parameters. There is no fundamental difference between the two. It turns out that Y is a good choice because you can use the same set of parameters for both the, for the MOSFET and the bipolar transistor. See H11, what is H11? What are dimensions? Forget what it is. It is the input impedance of the first port when the second port is Started. For a transistor, the uh, R pi is nothing but H11. For a MOS transistor, what is H, uh, H11? It is infinity. H parameters is definitely not a nice thing to do uh, to use for MOS transistors because all these infinities keep coming. When we fuse Y, then everything becomes zero, and you're all happy. The reason why I used why the Y parameters uh, formulation is because you can use the same formulation for both the, uh, the MOS transistor and the bipolar transistor, and you know it all becomes uh, quite clean. Another model that comes about because of source transformation is the following: If this is IB, incremental current is IB. What what we say is the incremental collector current. It is beta IB and the emitter current is, the incremental emitter current is simply beta plus 1 times IB. You learned this, this theorem in uh, basic electric circuits I suppose. So what is the voltage drop across R pi? You can think of this as a voltage source of value R pi times. IB and when you have a voltage source at a junction of nodes, what can you do to the voltage source? We can push it through. So, you get this and then I push this through. This should be a voltage source of R pi times IB. I push it through here. This should be R pi times IB. Do I need the voltage source in series with this current source? No. So, I can get rid of it like this. And this is electrically equivalent to the, the hybrid pi model. Now, can you 
Stare at this and tell me what uh, element this is equivalent to. The current in this branch is beta plus 1 times IB. The voltage across the branch is R pi times IB. So, I, this should be equivalent to a resistor of value. How much? R pi by beta plus 1. And what is R pi itself? It is beta times 1 over Gm. You understand? This is an equivalent model also. See this resistor which is almost equal to Gm but not quite. This is another equivalent model for the transistor. This is just you take the basic thing and then push voltage sources around. Nothing, no big deal. So, we will see uh, the ramifications of uh, how this might be useful in circuit design.